Hi, I'm Will. I'm the facilitator for the Rolling Stones cohort, and I'm excited to introduce the OER Crush activity in these slides. We hope the OER Crush activity will be a great way to start thinking about who's doing exciting and inspirational work in open education and how you can connect with them to make your own work more exciting and impactful. So let's get started. So what do we mean when we say your OER crush? The term OER crush is sort of a funny way of talking about people who are doing work that's exciting or inspirational in the field. Your OER crush could be a single person who's doing work you admire. It could be a library or an institution doing really good work. It could be a, a public organization, a government agency, anybody out there who's doing really neat stuff that you're excited by could be identified as your OER crush. I also want to note that this bulleted list here from inspires you all the way down reflects a, kind of a, a different set of stages in identifying, working with, and maybe building a relationship with somebody who's doing great work. So at one end of the spectrum might be simple inspiration. You, you see somebody else doing exciting work, you look at it and you say, gosh, it makes me feel good that they're doing that work. The next level over though, is you see somebody doing great work and you actually start to build on that model. You say, I love this program they're running or this style of communication they're using. I want to borrow that and build on it in some way. That's a, an even better way to sort of connect with your OER crush. And in fact, I'd encourage you to take it a step further. If you identify somebody who you think of as your OER crush, I really encourage you to reach out to them and have a conversation with them and say, this is what I'm doing. I, I love what you're doing as well. How can we work together or how can we build on the inspirational stuff that you're doing? From my own experience, that, that sort of reaching out and building a relationship is the best way to get started in and to sustain really outstanding work in open education. When I first got started with open education a few years back, I kind of knew what I was doing, but not really. So one of the first things I did was I reached out to people who were doing open education work in a way I found really exciting and inspiring. And I just said, hi, I'm new to the field. I'm trying to figure all of this out. Do you have any tips or advice? And very quickly, everybody I identified responded to me, welcomed me, and more than just sort of made me feel nice or said, we're glad you're here. They actually said, we want to help you be successful as well. And so they offered tips and advice and guidance, and some of them have become mentors in different ways. And they also offered me a lot of really concrete resources to help my open education work be more successful. They shared rubrics and slide decks and promotional materials and all the things you would hope for when building an OER program. So whoever you identify as being a leader in the field or somebody you'd like to learn from or build on or emulate in some way, I hope you'll be inspired by them but also reach out to them in different ways because that can really be the key to a successful program. So to sort of set things up, I'll talk some about a couple of my current OER crushes. The first OER crush I identify here is Affordable Learning Georgia. Um, I mention ALG because I think they are doing system-wide work as well as anybody that I know of doing that sort of work. They support authoring textbooks and course transformation. They do conferences. They do, they do everything you would hope for from a system-wide effort. And when I first got started in open education, I looked at ALG as, as really just the sort of inspiration that I talked about a minute ago. I thought, that's really cool. I don't know if I'll ever get to do anything like that, but I'm so glad it outs there. it's out there. It helps sort of showcase the potential of open education. As I've moved forward in my career, I've had the opportunity to see open education work in my state grow from sort of just one person at one institution to uh, system-wide and then eventually some statewide work as well. And so it's been great to be able to connect with and build on that relationship with Affordable Learning Georgia. Um, as my own practice has expanded, they've been hugely beneficial to me in the work that I want to do. And I hope that I've done some things that have been useful to them as well. So that's one example of an OER crush. A second example is the Open Pedagogy Network. If you're not familiar with OPN, um, it's sort of run by and curated by Robin DeRosa and Rajiv Janyani, who are two of the, the sort of big thinkers in open pedagogy as a thing. And it serves a couple of different purposes. One is it, it brings together these sort of narrative discussions about open pedagogical practices. If you want to know something about ungrading, here's the story of one person who tried ungrading. 
if you're interested in the wiki edu platform here's a narrative account of somebody engaging with the wiki edu platform and talking about how it went for them that has been really useful for me as i've sort of dipped my toes into open pedagogy because it has helped me take this sort of high level abstract term open pedagogy and make it real make it concrete in some sense i can say oh that's what they mean when they say this thing or this thing opn also has some nice sort of deep philosophical dives on the why of open pedagogy and i find those really helpful and inspiring as well so just like with the beginning of affordable learning georgia opn has been a really nice way to to be inspired to just get get excited and revved up about the potential of what we can do here um, also like affordable learning georgia as my career has progressed i've had the opportunity to build on that initial sort of an inspirational crush thing and turn it into more of a, a sort of shared model or even partnership in some sense. I'm currently involved in a project called the Scholarly Communication Notebook. Hey, there's that notebook thing again. Um, and I've, I've really benefited tremendously from borrowing their model and from talking with the folks who run OPN about why they did this or how this has worked out, etc. So those are two examples of OER crushes, people who inspire me, who are doing work that, that means a lot to me, but also that have offered models and partnership and guidance uh, in ways that have had really concrete effects on the open education work that I've done. So those are my OER crushes. I'm really excited to hear about your crushes. So what we're going to ask you to do now is to choose an OER crush that aligns with one of or at least one of your SMART goals that you developed earlier and then talk about it a little bit. So if you go to this link that's down at the bottom of the slide here, uh, you'll find a whole set of documents, and one of those is called OER Crush, and it's going to look something like this. One side of it is going to have a set of resources on where to find potential OER crushes. Uh, it has this uh, Google Doc created by the Open Textbook Network, the OER World Map, and Sparks Connect OER. Those are three great places to find an OER crush, but of course there are plenty of other places as well. You might find your OER crush on Twitter, or at a conference, or maybe even sort of across from you in your cohort, there might be somebody doing work that's exciting and inspirational to you. So because it's a Google Doc, you can also add your own resources in the doc itself. But the first thing we're asking you to do is to try to think about who's doing work that's exciting and inspiring to you. It's maybe meaningful and offers a model for what you'd like to be doing with your own OER program. So start with that side of the worksheet. And then once you finish that, flip it over, and on the other side, you'll find a document that looks something like this. And what we're asking you to do here is to just sort of walk through in a systemic way what we just talked about in the last few slides. So first, who is your crush or who are your crushes? What program or programs or people are doing work that's exciting to you, that's inspiring to you? So write a couple of those down. Then think about the SMART goals you've designed um, and start to do that preliminary work of alignment. I'm inspired by this group, and gosh, I wonder if that could help me meet this goal in some way. Once you've got those two things written down, start to think about what specific sort of materials, approaches, practices, resources you could borrow from your crush. What was it about your crush that was so exciting? And start to think about how that aligns with your SMART goals. And then think about how you might connect with your crush as well. So you might, you know, your crush is the be inspired part. The what you plan to borrow is the use as a model part. And then the connection piece is that third sort of aspect that we talked about. How are you going to identify and then reach out to your crush? And at this stage, the answer might be, I'm going to go to their website and I'm going to look at what they're doing and that's going to be enough. But I hope at some point you'll think about, you know, I'm going to email this person or I'm going to attend this event or I'm going to, I'm going to find a way to actually connect with this person or this organization or this group in a way that's reciprocal so that I can tell them what their work has meant to me, and so I can find ways that we can both support each other in a larger community, because that's really sort of the secret sauce of open education as a practice, is that, that sort of shared labor and community piece. And then the last thing we're gonna ask you to do is to create a simple action plan. What specific, concrete, actionable next steps are you going to take to connect with your crush? So this might be a bulleted list that says, I've identified eCampus Ontario. And the SMART goal they're going to help me think about is building customized material. Uh, what I plan to borrow is they have this great program at eCampus where they Canadaize 
resources. They, they take American resources and they sort of use the open license to remake them in a way that's meaningful in their community. Um, I'm working in, let's say, North Carolina, and so I want to borrow that model and North Carolina eyes some of these materials so they're really relevant for the community where I'm working. So I'm going to borrow that piece to meet my SMART goal. I'm going to connect with them by reaching out to a person I know at eCampus Ontario and starting a conversation. And so my action plan is uh, research model, talk about how it fits in my context, identify person at eCampus Ontario, send email, share results. That sort of thing. That's what your OER crush worksheet should look like at the end. Uh, and then obviously the last step is to share your OER crush with your cohort. So we're going to have these live conversations in a couple of weeks. Um, I hope you'll come to that having, having done this work and ready to share who your OER crush or crushes are, because I think they're going to be exciting to other people. But I hope you'll also come ready to listen to other people's crushes, because I think you're going to be really excited by the other examples that you hear about.